So let's talk about BVD. So there's two types of BVD that infection. There's there's persistent infection, and we talked about that at the front end a little bit, and there's transient infection. So transient infection or acute infection is like when you get the flu. It's when an animal with a competent immune system meets gets BVD, they get it and they get over it. Even the calves on board, if they're over four or five months old, or four or five months of gestation, <coughs> like I'd say they're a little, you know, a little um a large cat or like a beagle sized calf in there, say six, seven months. <coughs> if they meet a PI at that window, they're gonna try to fight that infection. It may cause abortion. Sometimes they wobble and abort a couple months after the infection. Um, that, that calf may fight it off quite happily and be born. It's your air quotes here, normal. Um, and, uh, but we don't really know until that, that outcome happens. So that's transient infection. Persistent infection happens when an animal is exposed prior to having a functional immune system. That's at around four months of age. And that's when that calf is about the size of a little cat in utero. So they're a mouse at two months, a rat at three months, and a small cat at four months. And again, that's when that auto recognition happens in the calf's thymus, when it works out what's it and what isn't. So you guys are with me on how this is transmitted? So how do these PIs get produced? Well, it's pretty straightforward, right? So let's say you got a PI cow or heifer that lives long enough to get pregnant. Well, here's, here's something that always happens. It's amazing these calves survive, but PI cows, if they fall pregnant, will always deliver a PI calf. Always, 100%. And there's a lot of confusion. Some people think this is the only way PIs are produced. In the work done out of the U.S. by uh, Brock and Greta Lucian in the U.S. back in the, uh, I think in the 99, somewhere around 99, something like that, they did a big survey across a lot of the southwest states in the U.S., southeast states. 7% of the PIs were born this way. 13, 93% came this way. And that's like normal cow. And there she is minding her own business. She's pregnant from one to four months. Why one to four? Well, if she gets exposed under that 40 days, almost invariably what happens is the conceptus is lost. And so they'll go through early embryonic death. The calf will be resorbed. You won't even see nothing. You won't see a sticky tail. Um, you'll just see a cow that the bulls went in. You know, the bulls are working. And you have a few more animals still cycling, you know, four or five weeks into the program. You go, geez, they're still cycling. Lots of girls getting jumped. And you think, well, the bull's a bit slow to get around to them, I guess. Well, what could be happening is we've got some early, early embryonic death. You see the same thing with Vibrio or Trick. Because, you know, those being STDs, you know, the animal gets infected by an infected bull if he's a carrier for Vibrio or a trick, um, you know, Campylobacter, Vibrio, uh, get exposed at the point of mating. They go to the early embryonic death, the cow becomes immune, and then she gets a calf later. So we see this disruption of the calving, of the, of the, um, of the calving uh, uh, histogram. So instead of, you know, 60% in the first three weeks and 24% in the second three weeks and 9% in the last three weeks, we may end up with say 30% in the first three weeks and they're just a bit slow to go on. And that could happen nutritionally as well, you know, bad season, what have you. And then maybe we see 30 or 40% in that second three weeks and maybe we only get 70% overall in calf. Um, so that's the clinical picture. Uh, same thing would happen if you had a group of naive heifers and you brought in a PI bull, what would happen? Well, you probably wouldn't produce PIs unless you had an AI program or you swap bulls in the program. That bull would give them BVD at the same time that he made him pregnant. The conceptus, conception might happen. The embryo would stick, the, vir the virus would be replicating, it would then lose that conceptus. 21 days later, cycles again, now she's immune, and she goes on to have a calf. But this is the way most PIs are produced. So here's a little girl, she's one to four months, she's hanging out, there's a PI, she goes, how you doing? Blam! My friend of mine's daughter made these uh, slides, Bill Hessman's daughter. Um, bang, she gets exposed. Now she is acutely infected, that's gonna last a couple weeks, she's gonna get over it. Her immune system is affected for up to a couple of months. This does some weird stuff. Like if you, if you took immunology uh, in high school or in college, there's a whole bunch of different things that our immune system does to get the job done. And this thing seems to disrupt them all. So chemotaxis, uh, recognition, um, T helper cells, all those fancy words that we learned in vet school, everything gets depressed when, when an animal's transiently infected with BVD and it takes a couple of months to recover. So if they're in a pretty cruisy environment, there's not much going on, it's not a big deal. If they're a dairy cow that just entered into a dairy and met a PI in their first lactation, they're more likely to get mastitis, right? So it, it is still clinically relevant, but in the case of understanding how BVD is propagated, don't worry about it just yet. So yep, transiently infected, that's gonna get over it. So now she's immune, so she's got her, she's got her immunity now. So the next time she meets a PI, next just, you know, very le much less likely to produce another PI, but her calf's gonna be a PI. Now, this is where most of the BVD gets transmitted through these guys. And this is where when I get a bunch of samples, if someone sends me a thousand samples from a bunch of calves, and if I get one or two PIs, then it's probably going to be something on the right. You got an older cow producing a PI calf. 
when I get a big slug of PIs, then what we've got is a group of animals with no immunity that met a PI at the wrong time. So we often can just look at the results and go, ah, shit, yeah, you've, you've boxed a couple mobs or you've introduced some animals. Let's see if we can figure this out. Or we'll go, ah, oh, yep, you need to test the mother of that PI. So in the European strategies um, and in the eradication strategies, to try to save a bit of coin, what we'd often do is test all the calves in these European strategies. And this is what they do in New Zealand a bit test all the, all the baby calves in the dairies, and if they get a positive calf, they test its mother. If the mother's a PI, we will always find her that way. If an animal's not a PI at birth, its mother cannot be a PI. Does that make sense? Because a PI will always have a PI, but most of your PIs come from normal calves. So if you got, say, 10 PIs that you found in a dairy, and you tested the mothers, one of them's probably going to be the PI that caused the wreck. The other nine are going to be animals that met that girl when they were pregnant from one to four months. That's just something to keep in the back of your head. And these little PIs, that's how, that's how the cycle continues. So if you think back in the days of the aurochs, you know, when there are big old lumbering critters cruising around in the trees in Europe, um, you know, and they're in their little groups, just like, you know, wild populations of deer, you know, there have been 30 or 40 in a group. And um, before, if there was a PI in there, that group became immune and there was no one to expose to produce another PI. So these little PI calves, they, they get some funny little neurologic defects, they get you know, blindness, domed heads, they can't walk properly. They probably got left behind, and then maybe another little group of cows would come, or aurochs would come along and see that animal and go, hey, let's go check it out. And then they would get exposed to produce another PI, and that's how this disease has evolved to live with cows. It's kind of like bees and flowers, except it ain't all freaking Skittles and freaking beer. It's a bit, of a bit of a shit show, really, the way this thing works, but it's very, very smart, very well host adapted in how it's transmitted. So the transient infection, like for instance, old PI cow there, if she exposed normal cow there and made her sick, well, normal cow's sick for two weeks, but she is not likely to transmit it to anybody else. It's gotta be the PI doing all the dirty work. Now that's a great strength in that it keeps a, a little bit of animals out there without immunity, so the disease can continue to propagate, but it's also a great weakness because we now have the ability to find these PIs very cost effectively. So regarding immunity, here's your PI cow, bang, here's a normal cow. Let's say we gave her immunity beforehand, so let's say we did vaccinate her with BVD, then ping, that's going to ping that off. Now, the thing about immunity and why BVD is so, such a nasty little disease is an, if you vaccinate an animal and it gets exposed to pesty, the virus is going to be coming through the nose or through the mouth. It's going to start replicating. So 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, all that. And it's going to start circulating in the bloodstream. And then the immune system is going to recognize it. It's going to go and take it to the lymph nodes and say, this is the stuff. This is the bad guy. The immune system is going to mount up very quickly because we've vaccinated and it's going to go in there and it's going to stomp out the virus. Kind of like putting out a fire, kind of like having a fire alarm. Or like let's having sprinklers. You know, you ting, sprinklers, you know, light, light, puts, puts the fire out. But if a little bit of that fire gets across the placenta, but remember about cows, that, that calf is living in the placenta without the immune system of the mother in there. It's on its own. And so if even one viral particle of BVD crosses the placenta, then it's in there and it's in there on its own with that calf who's protected from the mother. And so the calf will just start going through the process of replicating that virus. And if it's under four months, it'll, it will never get stopped. And that calf will produce tremendous amounts of virus in utero. And it's actually kind of a cool way of diagnosing cows carrying PIs is we can blood test them near calving. And if they're immune, if they're, if they're virus neutralization teeters, or if they're aged is like a three plus, 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 or their ELISA is like one point, you know, 2.0, you know, really high on the antibody test, then that's an indication that those animals are carrying a PI. So that PI is sh showering the cow with virus continually throughout the pregnancy because the cow's immunity can't get in there, which is a unique thing about cows. So uh, the vaccine's about 80% effective. So you give someone two doses of PestiGuard and you expose them to a PI, yes, it's going to reduce the consequences, but you're still going to get the occasional animal to produce a PI. So that's why it's important to know that and realize the limitations and the strengths of PestiGuard as a vaccine. PestiGuard is a fantastic product, 80% effective, doesn't sound good, but that's awesome for BVD. But you need to realize that it's like an insurance policy. Your house might burn down, you're gonna get your house back, but you still might lose your car that was in the garage. You know what I mean? You gotta be prepared for it and understand what it can do for you rather than expecting it to be the solution. It is really is a, it really is a, a, mid, a, a risk mitigation tool, vaccination. We'll talk about that in the context of our system.